Hey okay, everybody, we're going to get started. First of all, thanks for coming. This is a great turnout. We always like to support our speakers when they come, so thanks for being here. You're going to have a great afternoon. This is Mike Clark and Candace Kazaw. Yes, I see it properly. Uh, and the two of them worked together out in the beach office, actually. And um, uh, you joined the beach office, I think, just after it opened. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. As it opened. As it was yeah. opening. Yeah. Yes. Leslieville. Yeah, Leslieville. Sorry. Leslieville. It's all good. <laughs> it's like the beach good. versus the beach. Original, the original. The original was the beach. It was Kingston Road. Now we're actually in Leslieville. That's yeah, really and practicing right. real estate for many years. I'm not going to say how many, but many, many, many years. And uh, our uh, real household name in the East End. Um, you mentioned the Mike Clark team, and it's very, very, very well known. So um, there's definitely been hundreds, if not thousands, of listing presentations that you've done over the years, I'm sure. And they're here to share their knowledge and um, their listing presentation with you. Of course, as we know, things are fluid, so I know that they're going to welcome questions um, and do a mock presentation for you. So please um, don't be shy. Feel free to ask questions and enjoy. And thank you again for being here. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we're just going to get a little pulse of the room of who's here. So uh, how many people have been in the business less than one year? Okay, great. Um, um, less than three years. Okay, more than five. All right, okay, all right, good mix, good mix. So um, Candace and I have done this uh, before, and uh, what we like to get from you is if you could get anything from this presentation that was something you could take back and use or this would be really helpful uh, maybe you could just put your hand up and say like yeah I want you to I'd like Candace to do an objection on this or just any and then we'll have more questions at the end but is there anything in particular you'd like to get from this um, on objection on commission okay commission objection yeah I hear you have a few one percenters around here <laughs> <coughs> is the theory your last of the agents to present or the first to present? You know, I've never, I've never given that much thought. You know, I used to get in my head about it, but it can work both ways. You know, I've also been the, Candace had been the first agent, and the other agents didn't get to go in. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, I don't have a, do you have any commitment of that? No, I, I, I go whenever, it makes no difference to me. Yeah, yeah. And is it a one-shot deal? Uh, generally a one-shot deal, yes. So you bring the paperwork? Bring the paperwork, yeah. Goal is to get them signed up. Do you send a pre-listing a pre -listing presentation we, before we, you we go? We do not do a pre-listing, but we are looking at redoing that. Okay. Yeah. Do you, do you go in just by yourself? Do you go in with the stager? Do you, how, how do you do it? Depending so, on the magnitude. So we, gen so we generally go in... Sometimes we're going to go in together where we think it's going to be advantageous. We're going together. Sometimes we do it separately. Uh, but I would say most often, once we figure out our client's needs, then we would have the stager go in for a consultation, is generally what we would do. We've been in the listing presentation. Both of us have been After in the call. After you have the listing, you go in. No, no, no right we, there. we might be using that to, to win. For leverage, to yeah. win For leverage, to win the presentation. Obviously, if we're signing them up, then, then the, the stager is going to go over for the consultation anyways. Okay. Yeah. But we have a really good stager that does a good job, impresses them, which helps our, our case as well. Anything else besides the commissions? Any other objections or hurdles you're, you're finding? Yeah. Staying on track. Staying on track. Tell me when, some when, more about when, that. When, when, when one is in a listing presentation and you have you know, your idea as to how it's going to go, and then they throw the, the, the seller throws something in, and oh, yeah, 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 and then, and then like two hours later, you're still there, kind of thing. I guess that's what I would like to curtail. Okay, so watch to see, mm -hmm. check to see if we're on staying on track. I will. Okay, I great. Will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just four questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how do you price something when, especially in the beach and less built, like everything's been renovated and they're all slightly different? Uh, in this market, it's so easy to price because we just underprice it. Yeah. You know, like it's Candace and I were talking the way over. So, so I'm going to throw. I don't like your price. I go. You can't say that. You can, how can you not like my price? You know, it's we're underpricing it. 
it's just how how much do we have to underprice it is really you know type of thing, right? So because our our, our price points like one. One, two, one, three, one, five, and, and, and underneath. Like we're doing, you know, a lot of stuff around a million, 1.1, 1. 1, and we do the odd two, two, two million plus, the odd one. But it's more like, aren't they budgeting around, like, if it's listed at one, two, it'll go for one, five. Yeah, yeah. 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 But I, just back to your point, Julie, um, some of the things that, you know, I will say, well, look at, you know, this, this marble countertop that we imported from Italy. You know, I will explain to clients that, you know, many a time I've listed a home where they've gone and put a brand new kitchen in, mm -hmm. and months later when the house has now been sold, the brand new kitchen's out on the curb. Mm -hmm. So what is your taste and what is your idea of, wow, a beautiful piece of marble may not be the buyer's taste. So we're not going to look at it for, you know, the, 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 the wolf stove. I mean, sure, if the wolf stove, if there's the wolf stove mm -hmm. and top-notch appliances, it does have a little bit of a, but, you know, each person's taste. And I mean, I know that from working with buyers too, right? I don't think you're going to like it. The wall, it's covered and wallpaper, the walls are red, blah, blah, blah. Let me look at it anyway, and she ends up buying it, right? That I learned early in my game just to zip it up. But. Yeah, and I, and I, when they say, they, I, they, I go, oh, that looks fantastic. Yeah. Definitely getting extra money for that. Right. Yeah. Yes. And I, that's I what I'm it, saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's excellent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like keep it simple. Yeah. 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 Um, I would say for maybe some of the new people, if you don't have a long track record, some good selling points for a new person. Like you can't say they're the top this or the mm -hmm. top that. So what are some good things? That well, you, you can, can actually. You well, can't because you use you use your company, yes. you use your yes. office okay. stats. Yeah. So anything we do, mm -hmm. I mean, I go into some areas and I've got no statistics. I just use the office stats. Mm -hmm. That's what we're all here for, and that's really what you know. And you just use we a lot. You're saying mm -hmm. like you know we're profit share. I use we're profit share company. Okay. So. The 130 agents at our office have a vested interest in getting this sold. Have any of the agents you've spoken to told you that? Of course they haven't. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, we're bringing more to the party. Yeah. yeah. Do you price in the presentation or do you work them to a price at listing, at live listing? We work the price. We work the price hard um, because a lot of competition do the second step thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if they even know the price or they don't often come in prepared that is what we find and and, and quite often this is um, the our, our presentation right so you know just we're on the screen which we're gonna have the screen and, and Candace is gonna scroll along so you can follow along with us but this gives us just an advantage that we've come prepared and we, we you know we've done our research and quite often they're impressed by that also if they're not signing on the paper Tomorrow could be a different price, and Tuesday could be a different price. So imagine that. Four homes on the street have sold this week, and each time they've incrementally gone up 20%, 20%. And when you're going in and you've told them, you know, a million one, and by the end of the week it's now a million five, you know, I, we can't decide the price until we're ready to list it. And at that point, we'll come back to the drawing board. You tell them the price, and they, four days later, have another agent come in because they couldn't make it in on Monday night. Four days later, and they said, well, look at this, just sold yesterday. You're definitely over 1-3 then you put yourself into a pigeonhole there, right? So until we're ready to sign on the paper is actually when we will be pricing it because the next three days we'll be actually on the market after our photo state, you know, whatever, right? But what about countering uh, when they say, well, we've had other agents in and, and they're telling us 1-4, and I'm like, I'm, I'm not seeing 1-4. There's, your house isn't equal to the 1-4. There's no comps even close. Mm -hmm. And that's not a real number. Mm -hmm. So. Like what's that counter? Well, I, I, last week I was in, and I'm always trying to get, like, what do you think your house is worth? That's really where I'm always going, and you know, and they're protect. Some are protective of it, and I got into a conversation, and we were talking, and oh yeah, I had an agent last week. I was actually kind of surprised by their price. Oh, and I go, oh, what was that? Right? Well, they were north of a million. I didn't have a stat over eight fifty. Right. For that, right? So that changed my whole thought process. And I said, you know, I just said, then I sort of eked out of that area, eked into a better, maybe a better quality home that is in that price point. And I said, that, that, that could be a new, that could be the new price point. It could be. I said, it's all gonna come down to pricing though. And it's all gonna come down to negotiating. At, you know, like where, where our strength comes from is how much we can, how much money we can bring to the table from our negotiation uh, strengths. Yeah?
how do you decide how far you'll go in terms of staging? Like, say, other than you know, painting, do you want to rip out the rug, redo flooring, um, the kitchen? You know, it'll be, bring more value to the house, but it's a much bigger uh, expense. So, how how do you regulate that? Well, we've struggled with it. You know, uh, it, it, it shocks us what people. You know, what you do is you have contractors now going in as agents, and their husband or spouse, right, is a contractor, so they do it a lot cheaper, and, you know, we're kind of going, we're, you know, we've lost probably a listing or two, learned the hard way, you know, but now we're doing the numbers and everything like that, and we're open and willing to a certain degree. We haven't had to go as, I, I guess there are some agents that get ready to do it all for them, and I don't know how that works, but generally it's not a big one for us, but it does come up. Yeah, yeah, no. If you're listing around the million mark or one five mark, what is kind of your average staging cost or contractor cost? Would you say roughly? Thirty five hundred. Yeah, twenty five to thirty five. Yeah, so we have to bill up, you know, yeah. to get a stager in. Of course, and so, pre yeah. list inspection, I'm sure you do as well. Uh, yeah, pre list. So, so, so the numbers are really, you know, our profit yeah. margins yeah. are, are, you know, are getting sh shaky, right? So, you know, so that's where we're going. You know, so that we're trying to tie that all in. We're not refusing we'll do, we're doing it, but we're not exactly agreeing to do it. So quite often we find, once we've got the place listed and we've got their confidence, we can sort of go in and do our, you know, mostly do our own thing. Right. But we do get caught up too much in that thought process, and it can get in the way. Would you have a, uh, like a limit of what you're going to spend, like, a, <clears throat> excuse me, something like a half a point that you'll spend on everything, whether it's um, home inspections and... Uh, for the most part, I would say we probably have about a maybe a five thousand dollar limit. Would you say, Candice? Yeah, I mean, some women might go for half a point at max, at ultimate max. But it's kind of like you can throw everything. Like I have a, a, the verse of when you're going into a listing presentation or you're going into a buyer presentation, they're going to pick you because they want to work with you. They aren't picking you because you're going to give them painting and you're going to give them staging. And then, I mean, what's the bottom line when we're going to be working together over the next three to four weeks? really closely. I mean, I'll probably be moving in. Like, how is this going to work for you? And what are, what's our relationship going to be? you got to really understand. You have three or four other realtors that you want to meet, that you want to talk to. That's wonderful. But who's going to offer the service? Who's going to, who are you comfortable with? It may not be me. It may be Mike. It may be, you know, any of the other agents. It may be a brand new agent that's going to say, I have, you're my only client and I'm going to do everything for you. I'm going to paint. I'm going to stage. I'm going to do everything, right? So it's kind of of, it's a relationship, so don't keep throwing stuff at it. If your presentation is, so, you know, polished and you feel you are confident and you're feeling confident, you will hammer it. It will be done. I mean, I don't know how many times we've said, you know, can I call the other agents for you? Oh, do you mind? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's Hannah's favorite. She's always saying, I know you don't want to disappoint them. I'll give them a call for you. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> right, so uh, yeah. it's wonderful. Don't waste yeah. your time. Let's get moving. Let's get it on the market. Yeah. Fine. So that, yeah, Ken's got a really good point. Is we get so, too caught up on all those numbers, and we're not fixated on the real reason we're there. And and have we got tripped up on it? We have. We've been tripped up. But you know we you know like you know I think my uh, my average commission last year was four point seven five. All right. So I'm thinking it's pretty good. You know I'm kind of. I'm, Fairly happy with that, and because there's, but there's times because I run into it and I look, I do the math. Gee, it's a week. I don't know. It's not five percent. It's four percent. It's fifteen grand. Where else am I going to make fifteen grand? And do you know what anybody else is make fifteen? So there's some common sense in there a little bit to everything. Now I've added to my contracts that if any reason they cancel, don't sell their home, then they've got to reimburse the money. So I've, I've added that to my contract. You've also had them pay for it up front and you've deducted for it. Or I've had them pay up, up front yeah. and then deduct it. And I do that a lot with builders and stuff mm -hmm. like that because I'm giving them such a deal. So I have them and then I said that'll all be deducted. So, so we might be adding that to your actual listing agreement? That clause? Yeah. Right yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, right there's after a place. After a certain period of time? There's a place or after yeah. 5% or and it yeah. goes right in there. Right, right in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on buying um, buying first before selling the property, or you just 
So mine is, if you found something that you love and you're ready to sell, let's go buy it. Your house, done. If you are not sure of what you're going to buy, and we've been out twice to view a, a few properties, and you know, yeah, okay, I feel comfortable, I know what I'm going to buy, then let's get it listed. Let's look at a 60 or a 90 day close. I have, I don't know how many offers I've put a flex clause in, where, you know, the seller could move the date a little bit further out or a little bit forward. But Great I've also clause. prefaced it that, that by uh, making sure that they talk to their mortgage company, a mortgage broker, regarding... Um, the um, bridge. bridge financing. Yeah, because you so get some the, people you can get the, you can get per year about the list that kind of flexibility yeah. because agent sellers are coming put an offer they'll do anything you ask them to do. You know, yeah. they'll give you yeah. that thirty days <laughs> prior, thirty days after. They'll do anything. First yeah. yeah, you yeah. name it. You name it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anything else at all? Yeah. I think that if you're um, if you're selling a house for a seller. And you live in an area where there are a lot of people who buy homes to invest in. You can offer to rent the home back from them after you sell it. That will give you some flexibility in finding a new home. Mm. Okay, that's a good idea. You can rent it on a on a month to month basis. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't thought about that one. You gotta be careful. I've seen that, yeah. You might not be able to get them out. Yeah, I've seen that. Mm -hmm. Lawyers aren't too. They're tenants now. Aren't. You're a landlord. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. true. But we, you know, the, the thing is, it's just to be kind of looking and open, okay. you know, but we're going to talk about exclusive listings here today, which is a tremendous tool to, uh, you know, do you have Broker Bay here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Tremendous tool, right? Tremendous. Uh, first one we listed, I, 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 and the, the place was a disaster, and I had contractors coming in. He was paying, and as soon as we had that done, something else was wrong. <laughs> And, and I said, and he said, well, Mike, what can I get for this? And I told him, he says, okay, well, boy, if you get that. So I listed it exclusively. Candace says, geez, i got a builder that will buy that tomorrow. And done. Right? Double-ended it, right? You know, everybody's happy. So, yeah, there's, uh, yeah, we'll talk more about Broker Bay as we get into the, and, and how to utilize that. Yeah, by all means. In a situation like that, um, do you give the commission a break? Obviously, you don't have to go forward with painting and staging. Not unless you twist thing. my arm, put me into a headlock. I'm not giving any commissions. You I know. It's just if you're talking to the client and now you're double ending it, are you still getting the full five? Yeah, but that conversation didn't come up when we were listing it. So then you know, so they go, oh, now they. I go, no. I'm sorry. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, thank you. Sorry. No. <laughs> Can I say something about that? Yeah. You know that potential buyer because you worked before. You put time into that person, so you know him. So that time comes with the fact that you're selling this home. It's not just you owning a lot of I, I, I could be more, you're right, I could be a little bit more tactful, and, <laughs> but it's just not my DNA, right? <laughs> you know. You know. <laughs> I grew, up, I grew up in the Mike Ferry era. <laughs> Don't you know? I've got to stop that. I don't know. Anybody here ever Mike Ferry? You know, so I, I, you know, I come up from. I should soften it, but I, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else, guys? All right, and, and and write down if you have questions. We'll have. We're, we're not in any rush, are we, Candace? I do have to leave about two thirty, quarter to three. Okay, good. So. And I'm in no rush, so if you have questions, I'm here to answer any of your questions. So what we have here is the pre-listing, the pre-qual listing um, sheet. So when Mike, when they call and, you know, we're going to go on a listing appointment, there's a, there's a number of questions. Do you want to Yeah, so to me, th you... this, is, this is the goal right yeah. here. It's, it's to know, you should know everything as much as possible before you even get inside that house so you know what you're dealing with. So I don't go anywhere. Uh, actually, I did do a listing recently where... He was traveling and I couldn't get through to him and I didn't get the listing because I wasn't prepared enough. So this, uh, someone calls me until I have this in front of me I, I, and I've looked up their information, the house, and then I'll sit and then we sit down and we go through this. Do you want to do that? Can sure. All right. So, um, so, uh, so I'm calling, uh, uh, hi, hi Candace. Hey Mike, how are you? Thanks I'm for calling great. me back. I'm great. Thanks for calling me. Ken, is you, are you in a position right now? Can you talk privately? Or are you okay? Yes, no, I'm good, I'm good. Okay, great. I, you know, just out of curiosity, why did you call me, Candace? Uh, you know what? One of my neighbors just sold their home last year. I saw your sign and I thought, oh, I'll give them a try. Oh, that's great. Super, thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and tell me, uh, so how long have you been living there on uh, 
14 there? years. 14 years? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, and uh, have you done anything to the home since you've been there? Oh, we've done some, yeah, a little bit of things, like maybe, I don't know, bathroom, maybe the basement. <laughs> so you've done bathroom, basement? Yeah, basement. Uh, kitchen, I think we did the kitchen five years ago. Okay, awesome. Great, great. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what's got you thinking about making a move? Well, I saw the price you got down the street. That's number one. We are planning to retire, so we're looking to move to Collingwood. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah? And tell me, why Collingwood? Uh, well, we ski and we boat and, you know, we, we just thought Collingwood was a perfect spot outside the city, but still able to come down to the city. Great. Right. And what would, so what would be ideal timing of everything? If you could make, wave a magic wand, what would be ideal timing for all this? Well, I think June. June? Yeah. Any particular reason for June? Well, we opened the cottage up the May weekend and we want to be at the cottage, so... Yeah, we're going to winterize it probably, I don't know, but yeah, we would like to be, we're, we're planning to be at the cottage. Great, awesome. All right, um, now, uh, Candace, um, any concerns at all, any questions you have, might have for me at all regarding the, the sale? Well, how long does it take? It's been a long time since I've sold, so I don't know how long does it take, how much does it cost, uh, you know, are you there, do you do open houses? Um, yeah, just like just general questions, really. Okay, great, great. Oh, and do you stage too? I yeah, staging. Know. Okay, so I'm making notes of this as we're talking. Oh, okay, okay. Anything else you can think of? Mm, no, I don't think so. Okay, great. Uh, so I'm going to do a lot of extensive research before I come over, Candace. Mm -hmm. uh, and what really helped me pinpoint so we make sure we get you the most amount of money for your home. What do you think is the approximate value or price range your home's going to fall into? Well, you sold my neighbors for 1.3. I think it's 1.3. Okay, so you're you're saying your home's pretty much identical? No, no, they were they were two story. I'm a bungalow. Okay. <laughs> All right. Close. Okay. Close. Okay. All right. Okay. Super. The market's gone up. Super. And 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 and, and Candace, are you one of those people you're watching all the TV, uh, TV channels, and you're like on online looking at houses all the time? No. No. I watch Netflix. Okay. All right. Great. Great. What's your favorite show? I don't know Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. You're gonna qualify. You're gonna qualify. Okay. Great. Super. Um, so, is there anything you need to do uh, uh, to your home before you put it on the market? Well, my friend said I should paint the front door, but I think no. That's about it. Maybe. Okay, so very little, yeah, very little to do. Yeah. Okay, great. Maybe move the three dogs out, and I don't know what to do with the cats. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, you know, I really appreciate the fact you you've called me, and because I sold your neighbor's uh, home. Now, have you ever seen my signs around before? Yes. Yeah. And your big billboards. Okay. All right. Great. And now, are you considering inter interviewing any other agents? Well, a friend of mine told me that I should interview is at least three. So you're one. I don't know who the others would be yet. Okay. Do you have a brother? Yeah, I have a brother. Oh, okay. He's no longer in the business, but... Oh. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my brother's one of my biggest competitors. <laughs> is he still around? <laughs> I see him at Christmas. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I'm yeah, my brother, great, yeah. yeah. And, and have you had anybody over so far? Uh, no, there's some girl that keeps coming around, but you know what? I'm one her off my property. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Okay, super. It's a white door knocker. All right, great. commercial, you know? Yeah. Like sprinkler. Oh, look at that real quick on the box. <laughs> okay, well, one more quick question for you, Candace. Yes. Is, uh, so what's important to you? What, what kind of people do you like to do business with? Well, you sound very earnest. I like honest people. I like, uh, you know, high integrity. Uh, be honest. Be frank with me. Don't lead me down the path. If I can't get one three, um, you know, I don't know if we would sell or if I would, uh, you know, I don't know. So just be frank. I, I don't know. You're the realtor, so I would ask you to please be honest with me. Okay. Now, have you ever had a bad experience in real estate? Well, it's kind of like birth and babies. We bought 13 years ago, and I just couldn't stand that agent, but here I'm going back at it again. Oh, you're still considering this agent? No, not that agent. No, but just the realtors in general. Okay. <laughs> now, Candace, if I'm able to answer all your questions and concerns, and the price is right, and you feel like you could work with me, would, 
would you be willing to list your home when I come over that day? Will you get it sold by June? No problem. Oh, then maybe, yeah. Okay, super, great. Okay, great, that's super. So, what's, what's, what's usually good for you? Mornings, afternoons, evenings, weekends? Afternoons are good. Okay, great. All right. How about uh, Thursday afternoon between 2 and 2.30? Okay, that's great. All right, great. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send over um, some information. You know, it's like your tax, property taxes, some ages of things. Um, we'll need identification, you know, to list your home and everything like that. It's okay to send that? Yes, okay, Great, sure. I'll, I'll just take your email and I'll send that over. Okay, great. That'll be great. So, that would be a really good call, as you can see, right? That's like, oh, this is looking good, right? Because we quite often don't ask that question, do we? You know, are you ready to list your home when you come over? And so, uh, and, and so that's great. So, so all right. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna coming over to Candace's. What What if she said no? So, so Candace, are, are are you ready to list your home when I come over to see you tomorrow night? Well, no. I really told I really should be here interviewing the other two agents, and uh, you know, well, I gotta get my boyfriend involved, and you know. <laughs> Okay. Now, so that's yes. great, by the way. It's always uh -huh. a good idea to interview uh, two or three people. Yes. And so will your boyfriend be there uh, Thursday between 2 and 2.30? Uh, no, he works. Okay. Well, what, you know what? His, do you, is his opinion important to you? Oh, yes. Okay. Why don't we, why don't we meet the three of us? Okay. I'll ask him. Okay. Great. So do you have any idea of, like, what, are evenings better for him? Yeah, he gets home at about six o'clock, but then we have our dinner, and then I don't know, uh, eight o'clock will be okay. Yeah, why don't we do something between eight and eight thirty? Does that work for you? Okay, sure. Okay, great, super. So that's how we would, what, how we would handle that. Because the thing is, is you better have the decision makers, right? Mm -hmm. Which I didn't cover on the other, on the previous conversation, right? If you were yeah. sitting at your desk, this is one of your questions. You always ask that. Yeah, mm -hmm. true. But again, good point. You know, because you do want. It, quite often, you get stymied because they're going to go ask Uncle Joe or cousin Mary mm -hmm. for their advice, mm -hmm. and you know, it, 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 you know, you might as well have them there with you. Yeah, so my husband doesn't need to be there. I just I'm the one that's going to make the decision. No, no, no. Right. We'd like your husband there because he may have questions that you don't have, so we can get all the questions, and it's coming from his mouth, not from yours. So much better since he's untitled or not untitled, or because you know whatever, right? Then they should both be there for sure. What about for an estate sale where uh, your primary decision maker is probably called you, but there are sisters and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And it might be a little bit more of a geography thing. Uh, how do you deal with that? Yeah, so so this is a family estate, is it, Fred? Mm -hmm. Great. And how many people involved? Well, really it's me, but there is another person in Vancouver. So a power of attorney and you got a sister in Vancouver, right? Yeah. All right. How's that going, by the way? Oh, really great. Yeah? Uh, yeah. And, and is it the kind of thing that it, whatever you say goes? Uh, I, I'm not going to say that. You, you prefer not to say that? Okay. But I'll, I'll say all sorts of words, but I'm not going to tell you. Okay. All right. So you're kind of weird, Fred? They know. They know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I've known Fred for a long time. And trust me, he deserved that. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so no, yeah. I would hide it. I would hide it. That would be your personality. All right. So some people. We come up with that. We, 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 it comes to us that. In other mean? words, they would give us that they are the decision maker, yeah, and that really they're not that important. Yeah, probably in the background they are important. Yeah, which is why I asked, is your sister's opinion important, right? right? And, and and probably it was, right? right? And I'd say, great, Fred, would you mind if I sent some information out to her that I'm going to discuss with you? You know, because I want to get her involved. Yeah. I've got to get her trust as well. So that's where I go with that. Yeah. You know, I because I know how it works. You know, like even like the power of attorney looks like the head of the household is not because they got siblings Wife. heavily chipping, chirping in their ears, <laughs> mm -hmm. right. right? So it's really I need that. Like, what are their opinions? Right? One wants a, way too much for the home, you know that kind of thing, right? And you know, you get a great uh, workaround for the spouse or the significant other. But what about if it's just about interviewing another? two agents. How do you turn that 
request for a meeting around. Do okay. you want to be first? Do you want to be last? We, uh, I think that maybe you weren't here when that question got asked. It really doesn't matter to us. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, Actually, like the listing is the most important part in our business because we make it biased. But now in this situation, now if you are the third uh, agent like who is being interviewed, mm -hmm. and now say the property is like a million dollars, so one percent of million dollars is like a ten thousand dollar. So now if the seller says like I interviewed two other agents and they said they will list at four percent and they are also very good like reputed uh, agent like you. Now in that case, what? Uh, did you came across such situation, or if you have come across mm -hmm. such situation, what is your sort of like rebalance? So if that, because then as it comes down to that, like especially when you deal with builders, it's like seems like I don't know, four percent seems to be at least what we're noticing is the norm. So they're paying for all the state. They're paying. We're we're not going into our pocket after that. And we've had them try to take us to three and a half. We just don't do it. You know, we you know for whatever reason, and. So uh, it, you know, I quickly do. Let's see. It's one. It's uh, let's see. It's one point five. It's one and a half percent. It's eighteen thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay. If I match, if I match that, will you list your home with me today? Then, uh, because I do have the same offer now. So if you, if you can give me a better offer, then I may think about because other agents also get a good one and also offering me the four percent. Well, you'll have to evaluate yourself. So those those other agents lead with their discounts, correct? Right. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that is their whole marketing program, right? Where you see my signs, you see the value I add to it. Um, I know all the players here in the neighborhood. You know, we know most of the buyers. What do you think? What do you think is better for you? If, they, if they're sitting there at the negotiation table, if they're discounting their commission, how much are they going to discount your house at the table? Yeah. Is that what you want? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we get started on the paperwork and get top dollar for your home? Sound fair enough? Okay, great. Good. So, it's knowing your scripts, right? It's knowing your scripts, and you get that. And you know, because people that discount them, that is their whole program. That is their whole marketing program. And that's about what they're worth. Mm -hmm. okay. They're going to slap a sign on the lawn and they're not going to do anything else. What are yeah. you, you know, how is their presentation compared to my presentation? What are they doing different than that? What am I doing different that, that you know, <coughs> well, they didn't talk about that, 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 that. Yeah. Somebody has to pay for that, 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 that. <laughs> and, and in this listing presentation, as, as I'm going through what I'm choosing to pick, you can often see the agent from out of the area is not doing a great job. They've left money on the table. You open up, you look at the pictures, looks like they've taken them on their iPhone, <laughs> right? And, and that's what, you know, sometimes you're going to need to point that out. You know, if you're working that neighbor, the importance of using somebody local. Okay, so why don't we start? Okay. There you go. Awesome. So we come. So I come in. Here. Do you have a PowerPoint present? You just come in. Yeah. We did, no, but uh, we did send it. Up. We did, but we're just bringing it back up. No, I meant when you meet with clients. Oh, you go in. And uh, no, I, I use I use this. Okay. But we are looking. What am I doing? Uh, um, we actually we're, we're our team met with the LaRose team this morning, and they do every, they do everything on their iPads. So we're starting to look at really what we we're probably going to change this whole presentation. In the next three or four weeks, I'll probably change again because you got to reinvent yourself over and over and over again because things are changing, right? Okay. Hi, Candice. Well, hi, Mike. Thanks for coming. Great. Wow. Do you some water or anything? Or? No, I'm good. Thanks very okay. much. Yeah. So, Candice, um, tell me what's what's important to you about this whole process? Well, I, you know, as I said, mentioned to you, I would, we, would, we would really like to get uh, George. Uh, we would really like to get not, you know, on our way to Collingwood. We want to spend the summer there. Uh, I don't want to have to come back to the city for any gardening or, you know, taking care of the property. We really plan that we will be in Collingwood by June. Right. Right. And and how would you like to see your home presented? Well, What's important to you about that? Well, just that it shows really nicely. That it's, you know, we have good pictures and that it's on the market and that it's not long on the market. I mean, I have all these animals, so. I don't want to have it that we're, you know, having to put them in kennels and things like that. Yeah. So do, does the animals concern you? Yes. All right. And in what way does it concern you? Well, I just worry about putting them away or, 
you know, if they'll bite somebody or I don't know what to do with the dogs. Okay, All right. And have you met with any agents yet to discuss that? Uh, not yet. Not yet. No. Okay. All right. So that's one of your concerns. Yeah. All right. What What else? What other things uh, are you concerned about? Well, I guess getting the top dollar. I really think that I really want to get the top dollar. I don't want to have to paint. I don't want to have to do anything to the house. I don't really want to, I mean, here, sell it for me. Okay. All right. So keep it simple. Yeah. Yeah. And is yours, like you mentioned, trust quite a bit. Yes. So it's really once you trust somebody. Yes. Then you're, then you're locked into what they're suggesting. Right. Right. Okay, great. Like you're the professional, you're the expert, and then I know you're the area expert. I just want to make sure that I, you know, do the, my due diligence and do the right thing. Okay, awesome, great. Boy, it's kind of warm in your house here. I'm just going to remove my jacket here. <laughs> <laughs> sure, make yourself comfortable. Thank you. Okay, great. So I've done some research, all right? And I'd like to talk to you oh, wow. about some things. So, so do you know what's happening in the market? You can, yeah, you can go to the next page. Okay, so do you, do you know what's happening in the market right now? Well, I hear that the interest rates went down. I see that, you know, things are selling really, I mean, the sign goes up and the sign goes down. It things like, looks like things are selling really quickly. Right, right. And uh, what things you, what do you think really affects the market or the price of your home? What do you think the main things are? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know how it looks, how pretty it is. Okay. Well, it, it, first of all, it's like you, you're bang on, right? Mm -hmm. The market, of course. And the market I, hasn't been this good, I don't think, since 2017. Don't and you remember that. what happened then? <laughs> yeah. So we better, you know, get your home on early before the before the government shuts us down again. Oh yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> right. That's yeah, something to think about. Yeah. Um, so I mean, this your home's great, right? You, gotta, you know, Thank you. you must be yeah. very proud of it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we've been here for a number of years. We've tended to it. We've taken care of it. Yeah. Yeah. Right, George. Yeah, George is going to be a silent listener. Yeah. It's going to be hard for me to, but if, if George was there, of course you're talking to both parties, right? Yeah. Have you done a walkthrough? Yeah, I've done a walkthrough. I've done a walkthrough. Candace, when she does walk through, takes notes. You know, she takes notes. Yeah, sometimes I don't even write anything. I just pretend I'm taking notes. <laughs> it just looks like I'm really interested. Did you do it on your own, or does the seller come with you? Uh, I, the seller comes with me. Yeah. We've tr we've tried, you know. Mike Ferry is, you know, or have a seat here, and we'll be back in a few minutes. I don't find that totally effective. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. So yes, we, we generally do a walkthrough, and I might even, before I knock, take a quick look around the around the house a bit, just to see, you know, just to, you know, sum things up. And I said also, uh, Candace, the uh, competition. Mm -hmm. Well, do you know how much competition you you would have if you were to put your home on the market today? How much competition you would have? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Is there lots or is there a little bit? We're going to look into that. I'm oh, going to show okay. you how that affects things, right? Okay. And it's interesting, but we're taught as realtors to base our price on homes like yours that have mm -hmm. sold recently in your neighborhood. Okay. Because remember you said the two-story across the street there yeah. sold one for three. one three, and you thought your bungalow should sell for one three. Yeah. And why did you think that? Uh, they didn't do as much. That, their kitchen isn't new like mine. Okay. Their kitchen was original and old. All right. Okay. Now, would you compare your home to a semi-detached home? No, I'm mean detached. Right. So detached to detached. Yeah. Okay. So as realtors, we compare sort of bungalows to bungalows, oh. semis to semis, two stories to two stories. Oh. Does that make sense? More space. More square footage. Oh. Okay. All right. Now, do you know you know a little bit about new homes? A little bit. No. So, okay, we'll give you, so if you've got a, a builder builds you a thousand square foot bungalow or a two thousand square foot detached two story, what do you think it's going to cost for him? Oh, probably the two thousand two story. There you go. Oh, I see. Oh, wow. Cool. There you go. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we're going to move on. We're going to talk about, because pricing is probably going to be the most critical aspect okay. of your success. Stress free move to Collingwood and not having to worry about a thing. Oh, okay. okay. Does that sound good? Yeah. That sounds All right. Good. So, in a regular market, generally people would look at, like, that, let's say for finding your home's worth 1.3. All right. So, in a regular normal market, you would price it around 1.3, wait a week or two, and see if it sells, right? Mm -hmm. Well, in this market, people are actually pricing their home below market value. Why? 
Well, I've got some examples here, right? So really what, we're, what our uh, marketing, what our technique is, is actually pricing it lower than what it's worth. And I know that alarms some owners, right? Mm -hmm. We're gonna talk about that. And I'm gonna okay. show you enough examples that you're gonna have confidence in that. Okay, all right. All right? I, I really wanna trust you. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's talk about some sales on the street. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have this one at 43 Rosevere, mm -hmm. all right? <clears throat> There's a semi-detached, not, like not like your bungalow, right? All right, and you can see that in November, now look, they priced it at 849 and they got 951 for it. Wow, okay. So 100,000 over the asking mm -hmm. in eight days. Okay. All right? So there's a I see how that, yeah. Yeah, and it's... Does that happen for all of them? Uh, I'm going to go through it. In this market, it's happening with most of them, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'll give you, here's another example, like here is a bungalow on your street. Oh yeah. All right. Yay. And you can see here, it's 68 Rosevere. Yeah. Right next door to you. Yes, okay. Did you ever see that house? Yeah, I did. It was, I can't remember if it was nice or not nice. I didn't like those neighbors. Oh, okay. All right, great. Mm -hmm. And now, they put it up at 968 and got 934. So they got oh. 30,000 less than they asked. Oh. And it took them 11 days. Oh. Not yeah. Now, the the agents you're interviewing, which agents have you selected, and how have you selected them? Well, one is a friend of my cousin's. Great. Right, yeah. From Oshawa. Okay. Super. Yeah. And then the other one is in the area. Okay. It's a girl. How'd you meet her? Uh, she keeps coming to my house. Oh, the one that the the creeps yeah. out a bit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Great. So, your neighbors used a, a brokerage from outside the area oh. and got a lot less. Oh, oh, so maybe I shouldn't talk to my cousin's friend. Well, are you going to offend your family? Oh. Or is m money in your pocket more important? I think the money in my pocket is more important. Okay, all right. Just checking. Yeah, okay. All right, we have another one here, another bungalow at 81 Rosevere. Now look yeah. at this. They priced theirs at 829 they got over a million for it. <gasps> there you go. See? Wow. And do you know that bungalow on your street? Yes. Pretty nice, eh? Yeah. Right. Okay. So Is mine like that? Would I get a million? Hard to say in this market. Okay. Right? We price it right. You have the right agent. And you have somebody that knows how to negotiate that top price. That's going to be the big difference. Isn't 849 a little low? I was thinking I wanted more than that, though. Well, you're asking 849 but in fact, they were getting over a million dollars. So that's over $150,000. How does that happen? How come that happened? So the way it works is you price it into a point where you're going to get more buyers and more people looking at the home. Oh, okay. And the more buyers you get looking at the home, generally the more offers you get on the house. Oh, okay. And the more offers you get, mm -hmm. the higher the price. Okay. Okay. All right. So, for instance, if we price it at say nine ninety nine, all right, what you're going to see here is most of the competition. Like we could put it out at nine ninety nine, but the week you put it out, we got the exact same bungalow two streets over, out for eight ninety nine. Oh. Now, what do you think they're going to put their offers? Probably the lower price. Exactly. Mm, yeah. Okay. So now we're going to take a little look at souls in the area. Okay. All right. Okay, great. You see these are homes right in your neighborhood. Yes, right in the right in the vicinity. Yeah. Okay, great. And we'll look at the first home on Oak Park. Mm -hmm. So it's a detached, two-story, three-bedroom, unfinished basement. All right. My basement's finished. Yeah, That's you got a finished story. basement. Now, look at the price they listed it at. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so they've listed at $899. Oh, yeah, look at and they almost got 1.2 million for it. So, do so you better 849 or 899? That's what I think mm. we're gonna, I think that's what we'll be debating. I think mm. before we leave today, we're gonna figure out which price we're so gonna I, put on it. Okay. All right, and that's an unfinished basement. Yeah. But nice. look at the difference in price by even going lower than the 899. Yeah. Exciting, eh? Very exciting. <laughs> All right, Very. and then we have one here, just a couple of streets over on Chisholm. Mm -hmm. 
Now, look at this. Same host, bungalow, $9.99. They get $9.90 for it in 20 days. What do you think happened there? They priced it too high. Priced it too high. I'm getting it. And um, then, if you could look at the inside of the home, it's even nicer than that other one that sold for a lot more. It's because they had it high. And what else? What's the other key to look at? Oh, is that another very agent? Another very agent, right? So you can start to see the difference with true expertise in your neighborhood. I gotcha. All right, I've got another example. Here's one over on Bryant. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Now look at this. True story they, again. They yeah. priced it at a million fifty-nine. Mm, that's high. Yeah, and do you know how much of the market they took out of, out of place by pricing at fifty-nine thousand dollars over a million? Fifty mm. percent. It took 50% of the buyers that could have seen your home, could have seen that home, and purchased that. Because we see bungalows selling for way more than that than this nice two-story home. So now are you, are, are you bought in on the pricing? Yes, I believe, yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Any, any, you said you believe. Any hesitancies at all? No, I, I, I think you've mapped it out that I, I, I do understand. All it's right. Just, you know, nervous. I'd have to really trust you in that. Yeah. And remember, just the last one here on Glad Hill. Yeah. Look at this. Wow. Seven ninety. Seven ninety nine. Seven ninety nine. I know you don't have your glasses on. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Over a million dollars. Wow. With an unfinished basement. Seven ninety nine. Seven ninety nine. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's We're gonna have a little debating here to do. I think so. Okay. <laughs> All right, and then another one, another good example, one in Cedarville. So you start to see that every home, you see what the you can see what the right strategy is, can't you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Now, if we go over to for sales, yeah. now there is three homes for sale in your neighborhood. Only three. Only three. All right, we look at the first one on Holborn. So look at this, big detached two-story three bedroom has a basement apartment. Attached garage, and it's at seven ninety nine. Oh, wow! Well, what's that going to sell for? What do you think? Based over on what we put, yeah, over a million. Yeah. And do you see they've even gone drastically low? Yeah. Right. And then we've got another one over here on Denton. Mm -hmm. Isn't that picture? Look at isn't that pretty. photography fantastic? Yeah. Pretty. Yeah. So they price theirs at eight forty nine. And they're looking at offers tonight. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let me know what that sells for. I will definitely. And then the last one on Chisholm, go over to Chisholm, and they've got their, there's a detached two-story, three-bedroom, and they're priced at nine ninety-eight, and they've been on the market for ninety-seven days. Oh, that's not selling. Are you convinced now? Yeah. The pricing? Yeah, we're not pricing at nine ninety-eight. No. Okay, great. All right. All right. So. Do you like what you hear so far? Yes, Mike. And All I right. Feel, I feel, Do you feel confident? I feel comfortable. You trust me? Yeah. Do you see any reason it would stop the two of us moving forward right now and starting to get your home ready for sale? Maybe, but I have to talk to the other agents. I have to talk to the Oshawa. Tell her I don't think it's right because she doesn't know the area. Okay. And I think right. that um, I would like to maybe that girl that keeps coming around. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So you feel better talking to them? It is your cousin, I guess, right? Yeah. Now, are you going to list with your cousin? No. Okay. I think I've made my mind, but I can't list with my cousin. Yeah. Because she's out of area. Yeah. Now, what if we just listed, but I gave you a week to let your cousin know that you've decided to go with a local agent? Does that work for you? Yeah, we can start getting ready, I think. Yeah. Okay, so why don't we get started? Okay. All right, great. That's wonderful. Okay, so that's <laughs> one scenario, right? That's one scenario. Now, I'm picking up things as we're doing this presentation. I didn't continue on with the staging and the repairs and the TV. It's all based on what's, what's working here, right? And I just felt, and she threw an objection out there, right? Threw an objection, Pricing didn't hammer her. The cousin, I said, I'll hold off for a week so she has a chance to talk to her cousin, all right? <clears throat> so that, that scenario went pretty well. And what I think, Candace, you mentioned earlier, don't get too caught up on everything. So in, in some regards, that really is a trial close, right? It's really a, it's a soft close. 
And I think someone had asked about staying on track. I think when you have something like this with you, you can stay on track. And they start talking about the neighbor and this neighbor, let's try to stay on track here. Yeah. We'll have a chit chat after, but let's really focus on this for you. So, Mike, you were making the point, this low, get offers, go high, or get a higher price. Mm -hmm. And at what point, though, do you think that they really got, like, you, you uh, keep on your track of, uh, or when they actually give you the indicator that they know, okay. You could see I, I was there, and then I checked back in with her, like, you know, Mercy, she, I don't know, hesitancy in her voice. Mm -hmm. So I went back, and then we went to the next example, and then I think she said something like, I, I'm starting to see what you mean. I'm starting to see what you mean. I started to feel more comfortable with like, where he was going with the price. Yeah. But remember on the phone, I think you talked about staging. Mm -hmm. I don't, did you mention commissions on the phone? Yeah. No. I was no, I just like, was gonna how much it cost? Yeah, how much right? Cost? So, you know, it wasn't, a, wasn't an issue for her. Mm -hmm. wasn't an issue for her. And for at least half our customers, I would say, it's not an issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, you know? It really doesn't come up. Right? Yeah. What about, like, all the marketing? Where's the marketing part? Okay, so, that, so mm -hmm. let's say Candace goes on. I'm like, I really got to interview those three people. Right. Okay. Um, or you know, or, or we're not even there yet. Right. Yeah. So I'd say. So let's talk a little bit about our marketing. Right. And I'd say, you know, really, Candice, where this whole this whole game, where where you get top price, is kind of one online. And do you know what I mean by that, Candice? Mm, no, I don't. Do you know anything about beauty contests? Yeah. All right. Who usually wins a beauty contest? <coughs> Oh, that skinny blonde. Right, right. So, you know, which she's got makeup on, the right dress, right? Which, mm -hmm. which we could do to your home, right? Or we've got to give your home good online. Are you, are you online much? Yes. Okay, right. Yep. And what do you tend to look? What usually catches your eye when you're online? What houses oh, do you tend to look at the most? Oh, the ones with the nice pictures. Nice pictures. I have a friend of mine that showed me how to get onto Realtor.ca because she does decorating ideas from all the pictures. All right, all right. So that's something you know we cover, right? And so what we do is on our pre-list, you know, like what we send over in advance, we'd send over all our marketing. So so Candace could have seen examples of our 360 tours. You know, and some of our video that we've done, right? We might send that as like a pre-sell in advance. But we're not married to it because our belief is they're going to hire us on based on the relationship we build with them. So we went to the next slide, right? We have our uh, complete marketing plan. Now, depending on their disk, Right? We all know DISC? Everybody, everybody, anybody not know DISC, right? Yeah. So, so it, it depends if, you know, like Candice, you can tell is an S for people that know DISC, right? So it's built on relationship, it's a soft Price. situation, right? Now someone like a uh, higher C, like Mr. Scoglin over there, right? <laughs> We're going to have to bore down on this. Because he already doesn't trust you, right? <laughs> you know, he, you got to bore down. So we got to bore down on this. And we will get into this in intricate detail. We'll give him so much detail he'll be he'll be ready for a shower afterwards. <laughs> so, you know, and so with that we talk about the pre-home inspection, right? And quite often I will have them pay for the pre-home inspection. And do you know why I do that? Because I explained to them, I said, you know, home inspections can go two different you know go either way, right? I've had a situation, I said, I don't mind paying for it, but anything I do, I've got, to, I've got to fully disclose. So if you want to do the home inspection, right, then you might discover some things you might want to do about your home before you get it ready, right? And I'll say, don't worry, I'll look after you later. But in some situations where I suspect the home, I've had home inspections get in the way of getting a, a pre-home inspection, get in the way because it was grading. You know, it was graded towards the house instead of graded away. And it's the winter and there's not much you can do about it. You, you, you can remember, right? So that's just a, you know, but certainly we'll do a pre-home inspection. Uh, then we talk about the coming soon pre-marketing. 
so I understand more clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Almost about over their heads. The, <laughs> the full disclosure. Okay, so if we pay for it, full disclosure, we're required anything we know. Mike, do you have a home inspection report? We do. We do. Right? Uh, the home, the, the home, like, I'll give you a, for instance, before I sold my last home, I did my own home inspection, right? I went, I'm going to get that fixed, got to get that done, right? And so, uh, uh, and we've got a home inspector that will go over and, you know, like, grounding, wires need to be grounded, you know, we, we, you know, and he'll say to the homeowner, get that fixed, take a picture of it, and we'll correct it in the home inspection report. But if owner pays, gets it, yeah, uh, and tells us or we see the report, do we have to disclose that? Sorry, say that again. So if we understand what the hell, what needs to be uh, fixed in the home, once yeah. we know and have seen, yeah, we're required to disclose as well. So what you're suggesting is have them own and and hold on to the home, the inspection. Don't tell us about. It. Yeah, I don't want to. I actually don't want to know. And I say deal directly with our home inspector, right? Mm -hmm. Right? And and that's and in some cases we'll let people do their own home inspection. And then let us know stuff that you've done. Yeah, I said if anything, and and I said if anything, it's going to protect you yeah. because if people do like I said, we all know when it, when when a home is sold conditional home inspection, the owner is always worried that they're going to use that as leverage against them. But I say in this case, you're going to be as educated as you know what. And in some cases, it's a legitimate reason to negotiate the price. I think we've all ran into that, right? Mm -hmm. And but it's a lot easier doing it that way than trying to convince. If if the, if the buyer agent has done it, then you're at the beck and call of the buyer the buyer agent, their home inspector, and the purchaser, who's now coaching their agent how they want to negotiate. So that's it's a it's something to think about. It's a one off. It's a it's a possibility, right? Um, you know, we talk about, we, we have we have open house specialists because Candace and I just don't like doing open houses, right? Right? So we have about three or four agents at our office that are actually good at it, right? And because we run into problems where they go, you mean you're not doing our, you're not doing our open house, Candace? And you go like, oh my God, I should have handled that way out in front, right? So, uh, you know, we talk about that, and to make your uh, open houses even more effective, they're going to be able to boost to a cer certain, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? PSEO, like on their Facebook. Yeah, to a certain uh, demographic or certain, certain uh, 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 in the area, young professionals, etc. that's going to give your open house a little bit of push. And Candace, the other agents talked about push, uh, doing a push on their Facebook? No. For an open house? No. No? no. no? Oh, okay. All right. So, um, <laughs> and we're going to be able to actually, Candace, because we know how in depth you and Fred are, right? We're going to be able to show you all the stats and how many people are looking at your home, wh what time of the day, which days are, are peak. All right? Okay. All right? Okay. All right. Now, here's what I'm going to show you that I think you're really going to like. Okay. So this Broker Bay. Mm -hmm. So we, our, our agency has just signed on to this network that goes out to 24,000 agents, right? In and around the area, all right? So right now you said you might want to do a little of this, a little repair there, right? And you mentioned, now that we figured out that probably a million dollars would be a big price for your home, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So without you having to do anything, right? Remember the dogs you're worried about? Yeah. Can you imagine if we didn't, if you got your million dollars, didn't have to worry about the dogs, we took the stress right out of your life. Oh my God, that would be cool. Would that feel great. fantastic? Yeah. Because they're like two hundred dollars each to put in the camera. Yeah. So we can have this. We don't. We don't have to. Have, we don't have to have a for sale sign unless. Do you like the coming soon sign? Yeah. Okay. We that. can. We can put a coming soon sign out, right? Mm -hmm. And. We can manage the showings around you and the dogs and everything to create no inconvenience for you. Oh, great. Yeah. Do you like this program? I like that idea. That's okay, That's... great. Grab your identification. Let's get going. Okay. So this is a real 
the, and this is how you tie up a listing, right? Because when we're not listing, I get we're not listing to March, we're not moving to June. So I go, well, that's, that's, we, I said, and they were looking for an end of June closing date. I said, we can get you an end of June closing date. And you know, you can. Yeah. Easy. So this to me is a tremendous selling tool to get a house listed. Yeah, and we've been doing it. There's 70,000 on Toronto Real Estate Board, and this is only, only, 20, only 24,000 agents are doing this. And all the big <coughs> Williams office has it. A lot of the Remax offices have it. What yeah. do you say, though, when, because if the house can obviously go to market, they'll probably get more. Well, no. What we would do, we'd probably look at bungalows and we'd say, like, if you get, like, if, we, if I board down, normally we'd have pictures in behind mm -hmm. those houses, but this is a short firm. And she could say, like, if we got to figure, like, you know, because I, I listed one last week and went through the presentation and she was reluctant. To, uh, I don't know what the price is. She knew what the price was, right? And then we do it. And I said, so you can see from, you know, what we're here, you know, what would, what would you think your house is worth? Yeah, like a, oh, and she goes, happy. well, if I could get 820, 830, I'd be happy. And I said, why don't we list it at 850? She goes, that's fantastic. And we saved we, your top price, and we saved you all that work. Mm -hmm. And she didn't interview the other two agents. Yeah? What about if there's another realtor team in the area that is also going in and competing, and they have an equal reputation? They know that. And they make, what was the last part? They do cut their, lower their, their commission a little bit. They do cut their commission a little bit. A little bit, okay. They come up against that. They're reputable or whatever. Yeah, so, so you got to know your competition. Yes. You really got to know your competition, right? Your and you got to figure out what's going to set you apart <clears throat> from your competition. They do the staging. They do all. Yeah, see, we realize that's all. We, at least we almost yeah. think it's like baloney now, right? Well, you know, it's all like. Not say, always, but sometimes. Well, most of it. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, I look at staging. Sometimes our staging doesn't look as good as the other one. The other one, did, but the prices are all different. It's yeah. timing, I, I, and I think a really good agent can maybe get you an extra fifty thousand at the table during a multiple offer. Yeah. A real good agent, That's which which nice. which I'm going to cover in in just the next minute. But yeah, you know your competition. You got to figure out what sets you apart. Yeah. So I was I was against a team. That was door knockers in the neighborhood. They were savvy social media people. And what I did was when I went over, and it was a two stepper, I said, Do you have any pictures? They had this great backyard, entertainer's backyard. And I go, Do you need pictures? Like, any pictures? And go, oh, yeah, we got pictures. And she's got her iPad. I said, Would you, Could you send those over to me? And, right? So he sends them over. So I go back the next time. I've got a, you know, the color brochures you have of the home? Mm -hmm. I had the whole backyard done with a with a nice color brochure on my back. Blew blew them away. You know, blew blew them away. But just asking for pit like you could even say that up front, do you have any nice pictures of your grounds? And you know, before you go over you have a brochure done on the thing. That's gonna set you apart from in, from the other agents. You've gotta always because remember the public looks at every one of us the same. They mm -hmm. all think we're the same. Whether you yeah. wanna Hear it or not, they look at us like we're the same. So we all stay, we stay, all do this, yeah. and we, you know. So that's you know, like that's why that broker bay would 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 set us apart. Um, and then we go through. We can go to the next slide and see. I kind of go through this stuff because it, you know, like all the syndications we're in, the social media, and I'm not really good at explaining that because I'm not. I don't really believe it makes your own bit sold for more. I, you know, I really, and someone could convince me of that, I, you know, I'd be willing to listen. Um, you know, we talked about the 360 tours. Something we're doing uh, is video introductions. Some people here do video introductions of the homes, right, Julie? Yep. Yeah, and that sets you apart. That sets you apart. Because you've always got to look at what sets you apart from everybody else. All right. Then we talk about the market in the open houses, the Facebook. The, you know, the Facebook, we talk, Fred, we got all the stats here, man. We got stats, Fred, you get, you get an hour here. A happy camper. 
uh, social media. We talk about social media now because I'm, you know, and I would. So we cover all the bases, right? Like everybody does, right? Unless maybe you're a social media whiz, and that gives you your, you know, maybe that resonates with them, right? Maybe that resonates with them. And we talk more about Facebook. We talk about the brochures. We do a newsletter in the area. Kind of like blah, blah, blah. And that's, you can see I need to change the listing presentation because <laughs> it, it no longer resonates. I actually want to shorten this, you know, like almost with the homes and finding what's important to them. Because really what I want to do is I want to bore in on what's really important to Candace and what, George, right? So your uh, presentation is you got all this stuff in it. Do you flip over it? I can, well, or do you go I in and know them I, well enough that you don't, don't have it in? A lot of times I don't get there. I see. Like I did with Candice. Because, oh, yeah. you know, I'm always looking for trial closes. Right. And I'm always looking for, if I see a buy-in, you know, and, and you know, and probably because I've been in sales since I've been a newspaper kid, you know, when I was eight years old, right? You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's a, almost a second sense with me. It's just picking up when people, and I can, you can also tell when they're not buying it. Yeah, and you've it, got the buy-in, stop. Right. You could blunder the end but of it. Leave <laughs> yeah, leave that with them. Yeah. yeah, for them to give to another agent. The, well, listen, you guys, oh, well. you know, well, yeah, you know. Now they, they got it. Do I ever see other agents doing this? No. They got. They're doing their own thing generally. Yeah. How do you get most of your listings? Uh, fifty percent would be past clients referrals, right? Fifty percent. Then our uh, marketing, signs, you know, billboards, billboards, signs, newsletter, area. right? Mm -hmm. And concentrate one area. So we used to have a big team, and then uh, Candace, I decided where we wanted to put our energy, and <laughs> that may change again as well, yeah. right? Because mm -hmm. you know, to me, you've got to reinvent yourself almost every year is what I think you need to do in this business, and that's why we went with the Kevin the Rose team today, and we were like. Wow, right? And it's like I, you know, I remember when I first got a real estate agent, my broker said, "I want you to take out the top people in our office out for lunch once a week." So there's probably ten people here you could take out for lunch, and all you get to do, Mike, is ask questions. They're not interested in hearing anything you have to say, <laughs> not a thing, right? But they're really interested in talking about themselves, right? And it was one of the most valuable lessons you could ever get. You can go all these great Keller Williams classes that we have. You take some of these seasoned agents, and they like being acknowledged, right? And you pick their brain, you're going to learn a lot real quick. So, and then we get to, you know, it's so it, it always comes down to, so why Candace? Why, why Jackie? Why Julie? Why Fred? You know, why should we, why should we use you? You know, it, it's, it's really what they're thinking, right? Why are you different than the other agents, the other two agents that will do 4%? What makes you different? Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, I said, well, I, you know, I specialize. I've done over 4,000 sales in the area, right? I, I said, it's like Candace's experience. Does that, is that, do you think, does that count for anything for you? Oh, I think so. Yeah. 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 You're having heart surgery. Are you going with the, the new guy at St. Mike's, or are you going to Mount Sinai no, no, for the 72-year-old guy that's done over 3,000 heart surgeries? I probably. Mm, yeah, exactly. That's what we're doing, <laughs> right? Yeah. And as you can see, uh, and I'm going to show you, Candace, that I, I, did you realize that I'm achieving the highest prices in the neighborhood? Mm -hmm. Or if if you're newer, did you realize that we are achieving the highest prices in the neighborhood? Use your company stats, guys. Use any Keller Williams. You can use any Keller Williams brokerage, right? And so, and then I talked a little bit about negotiation, about you know when you're at the table, and how that, uh, how the whole thing works, how you treat the agents, how you don't, you have like one, two, three tiers of people coming back and forth. So we, I talked a little bit uh, about how key the agent you have hired, how good are they at negotiating? How well are they known? How well are they respected? How yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Is there any agents here that have been less than a year? All right. And how many homes um, have you negotiated? Two. Two. All right. And I, so I've done 4,000, right? <laughs> right? So it's not, I'm not picking on either one of you, right? But I am going to make that point, right? I'm going to make that point. 
uh, you know, and I said, you know, for me, it's some name recognition that, you know, that's one thing I use. And I say, agents like working with me. You know, all my competition, they like me because I treat them really good. But just to go back to the newbies, right? Mm -hmm. They may relate to you, and they didn't like the big, big. four thousand homes and yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. They may say, "I like you because you know what? I'd rather give a young one a you know a good, good start. Show. You're not working with anybody else right now. You're going to work your butt off to sell my home." Mm -hmm. I might say, "You know what? I want to get sorry, my yeah. dark. I want to." You're going. Home. I'm I'm available twenty four seven. Yeah. I'll babysit the kids when we need to. Yeah. You know what? You're right. You know. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. It is. It's all comes down to me is how well you relate. Yeah. And it, it doesn't always work. I, I did a listing confidence. two weeks ago. I thought it was killer. I thought, man, we were talking about the East Coast and we were eating lobster together. I thought, man, this is looking. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. And I got the email three days ago. Sorry. Going you know, with your brother. We're going. <laughs> we're going with your brother. What's his name again? <laughs> yeah. So you know what. You know, and, and, and part of this is also uh, uh, minding your mindset. You know, like, I've gone out to listening for and I get bad mindset. You know, my wife's yelling at me, I'm stupid, you know, whatever, right? Or I'm carrying some bag, you drop my confidence is down, right? Because you've got to go there. You're, you're kind of like, you're presenting. You're on. You're on. You've got to be on. You're on. And what's going to have you, what gets you on every day? How do you get on every day? It's easy. <laughs> ACDC, all right. Okay, all right. It's a much more yeah. liberal world. More or less a band, sorry. <laughs> some people go to the gym. We get some fired up, right? Some people meditate, right? Uh, I personally get up in the morning and I read uh, Maxwell, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I uh, what do I do? Journal. 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 I journal. I journal. And, you know, I've gone through months where I, I start getting up reading the newspaper in the morning and not journaling. So that's part of it. Uh, here's, here's one how I got a listing the other day. The second last one, I have a dedicated real estate lawyer, uh, a mortgage specialist, so let me talk to him 24-7. As I have a lawyer, I, I didn't say, I don't think he said that we're on retainer, but, but on call 24-7. So, and I said, well, do you know why that's important? They go, no, why is that important? I said, because of all these multiple offers, we're seeing all these crazy clauses. We're seeing assignment clauses. And do you know what an assignment clause is, Candace? No, I don't know what an assignment clause is. Well, people are buying homes, and then they're assigning their rights over to another buyer. You know, and they shrug all their legal responsibilities. Oh, my. Okay. Can you imagine having a lawyer on call to restructure these clauses in your favor? Oh, did any of the other agents have uh, No. No. And actually, I interviewed first Julie, and she asked the next three agents if they had a lawyer on call. And they stumbled. They stumbled. You do have a lawyer on call. Right, well. Mm -hmm. Whether you have one or not, you got one on call, right? <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I, know. Not, I know. I'm not saying that. But it's funny, set yourself apart, little differences. So let's have a big hand for Candace. So, uh, so I'll be, uh, uh, give me two minutes, oh, I get, or anyway, so what I have is, uh, I have statistics, IMS statistics, pardon me, yeah, do you want, can you do that? That's great, thank you. So IMS statistics, which your, uh, does your office produce these? I have said, right? So you could use the office stats, these are, you know, you know, anybody that's good with stats, so it just gives you some impressive statistics. All right. So, could you go back? What, what do you mean by I? I, I thought you talked about the, the, the monetary fund and the IMS. IMS is the oh, IMS. Uh, governing statistic uh, company for, I guess, Toronto Real Estate Board Stats, right? Oh, okay. Are you familiar with them? No. Okay. All right. So I use IMS stats because my whole strength is around my negotiating. So on average, the average house we're negotiating is on average 142,000 over the asking price. Oh, okay. I have been bugging uh, Daniela for that for a while. All right, no, she, I'm sorry, Daniela. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and we talk about days on the market again. Comes from my IMS stats, yeah. right? No. Now, does, is this winning me the listing? No, not really. Not really. It's like, do I get this far? Not often. 
And then I basically print out and go to like my last four, three, four, five sales in the neighborhood. Yeah, my because because I've been around thirty over thirty years. But it said just you would use your company, right? You would just use the company sales, and you know it's a hundred thousand over in so many days. And this is also strengthening to them that I believe in what I'm doing and that I this is what I'm doing, right? So they're not fearful. And then I'll go to the one on Whittington, where it's sold for two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars over the asking and. I don't know, it was like two days, three days. And I'll tell them about how that was a bully offer. And we were able to get a bully offer on top of the bully offer. And we got them an extra, in that case, an extra 25000 So these are the, the kind of, because really what they want to do is have you justify that you're worth that 5%. The reason they're throwing that out is they don't think you're worth your 5%. And you can't win them all. Right? You can't win them all. But you've got to think about selling them on, or at least convincing them or trusting you that you're worth it. And so yeah, so I just do some sales right in their neighborhood with some impressive stats. And then on my last page, it's like our last 10, 12 customers with their emails and their phone numbers. And I said, you know what? I said, you know, most of our customers don't, won't call them for whatever reason, but if you call them, I wouldn't have to say another word. I wouldn't even have to tell you anything. You would just hire me. Because we built these great relationships with our clients that we've dealt with, and we know that. When do you ask your client for the right to put that on there? Usually, right when I sold the house, when they're all happy and joyous, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think, and then there's our office statistics on the very last page, and that's it. Any, any any questions, thoughts? Yeah. Uh, you said uh, you started at age eight from newspaper, and now it's been like thirty years in real estate. So, what do you think uh, the most important sort of like uh, uh, to be a good salesman? What do you think some of the most important uh, ingredient or whatever like? Uh, be a good salesperson. Yeah, to be a good salesperson. First thing comes to mind is conviction. Uh, passion, excitement, uh, belief, that's where I'd start, that's where I'd start. I mean the biggest thing is you've got to believe in yourself first and you've got to get yourself excited. I mean you've got to do, um, uh, call it self-development. You should be, you know, I would recommend you spend at least five, say five percent of what you earn on self-development. Right, you know, it's like, and I, I've gone through periods where I stopped doing self-development. I, I remember I, I had coaching my whole life up till two years ago. I always had a coach, had a you know, phys, you know, had a coach at the gym, had a you know, always had coaching, right? And then I dropped the coach because I thought I kind of know everything, right? And it was a big mistake. It was a big mistake because therefore accountability went out the door and I stopped growing. So it really comes down, what I've realized is grow, you know, growing and growing and taking your and enriching your mind. And, <clears throat> and for me, the keys for me is to be passionate about what I do. And you know, you get a little sense of me talking up here that I'm a little bit passionate, right? And I kind of like what I do. You know, it's, it's fun. Mike, I've noticed that this presentation was a certain address that I know. Uh, yeah, oh, is that funny, Fred? Would you uh, mind telling us? Uh, oh, okay, all right, so here's the story. So this particular, anyway, 66 Rosevere, right? Uh, and they, another Keller William agent uh, in the area, because uh, now there's agents that door knock eight streets, and they just, they, 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 they bore it down, right? And... Um, and I've known this person for two, three years. Like we just talk every once in a while, and he tried to refer me business. And so then he said, "Okay, Mike, we're we're, we're selling our home." And I thought, "Man, this is like we got a pretty solid relationship." I'm going over to list the house, and they go, "Oh no, oh, no, no, we we got we're interviewing three people." See, you know when you do that, right? You know, oh no, we're interviewing three people. And I go, oh wow, 
and, and they were interviewing one agent who was a prominent agent who was in Florida. And I said, uh, and they felt because that person had sent them a lot of business, right? And I said, well, that's great, but they're in Florida and I'm here, right? You know? So I said, I, I said, I get it. I said, you know, I said, well, any good professional agent understands that they don't get every listing. And they'll be fine with it, they'll still be your friend. If they're not, then they never were your friend. Right? So, anyways. And then the other agent who's really good at social media, and I actually learned a lot from this young agent. Like, I was like, wow. I was kind of like, man, I need to shake it up a bit. And, and, and she, being a Keller Williams agent, I called her. She shared what she was up to and what she was doing, which you love, right? And so anyways, I, I'm sitting there, and I got the brochure with the pictures. Remember, I said in the backyard, like, I, my team spent three, four days preparing for this. Like, I wanted this list. So we get it, they open up a couple of beautiful bottles of wine, where, you know, a couple of days go by, I get this text from my uh, client. Mike, I've got some bad news. Met this other agent at a party, he's got a buyer for the house. No. Oh, no. It's like eight in the morning, right? And I'm like, I'm having a heart attack. I'm like, you got to be freaking kidding me. Like, you really see the commission dollars sailing away, right? <laughs> so, that all that great stuff, I, all of a sudden I'm down here, right? He said, give me a call. So I call him up, and he, and he kids, he, you know, he says, all right. I met this friend of yours at a party, and he thought it would be a good practical joke. <laughs> good practical joke. So Fred Scoglin puts him up to this, right? <laughs> so, but I tell you, it took a month or so off my life. <laughs> and that's our AMC right there, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, now the, the problem with that is we'll do it back, and I'll get it. And I will bite yeah, so bad. I could never be that mean to a guy. <laughs> so, anyways, guys, you guys have been probably one of the best audiences I've had. Thanks so much, and your questions were fantastic. So, thanks a lot. Good. Thank you. Thank you.